All right, so this is what our plants look like after almost a week of being in here. Not quite a week. So the lunchbox peppers have grown a little bit. You can see there's some type of nutrients coming through here through our drip emitters. Um, tomatoes are looking overall pretty good. A little bit of nutrient deficiency maybe there. This one seems to be struggling, but you know, overall okay. We're going to calibrate our pH meter and test, change, do a nutrient change today. Get some readings off this, get our EC adjusted, and get these peppers and tomatoes growing correctly. And then you can see over here how much growth we've had in roughly about a week since we planted this system. So, you know, a little more than a week, but things are growing good. And over here, Swiss chard's growing pretty well. You can see the escarole really isn't gonna tolerate it. It looks like it's got some serious nutrient deficiencies already, so. But the Swiss chard seems to be looking better than the escarole. And so I wanted to experiment with the escarole, but you can see, you know, I know this wildfire lettuce mix is decent. It still has some color, a little bit of a deficiency, but uh, it'll be okay. It still tastes good. So Jake's getting out the pump. We're gonna drain our systems here. So we're gonna turn, we'll turn this off, drain our systems. Um, and then I'm going to calibrate this meter, the pH. And so see we're draining these reservoirs out. We're going to just start fresh. And we're going to actually figure out how much water is in each one that we would like to use by using a five gallon bucket and then dumping it into our reservoir. And so then when we go to mix our nutrients, we know exactly the amounts we need to go into each system. And so that'll make it easier for, for us. So we're filling up five gallon buckets so we can actually measure how much we're putting into our system. Like I said before, see we got that nice green fish water, all those nitrates. And let's go back into the system. Five gallons so far. That one's gonna take a lot. All right, so we've got our pH seven and our pH four our solution so we can calibrate and then some electrode storage, storage solution. We can also use pH 10 to calibrate it. And so here's our meter. We're gonna turn it on to pH. You can see it's a little high. So the storage solution is a low pH. See that we got storage solution in there just a little bit, keeping that probe moist. I'm gonna go like that, dump out this storage solution because I'm gonna change it out. Um, I'm going to rinse off this probe a little bit. We want to keep it clean and get everything else that's on there off. I like to kind of get shake it and then just try to get as much water off after. Now we're going to go on the next step, which is to calibrate it. And so when we're calibrating this, we need a pH 4 in one container. Here's our pH 4, it's the red. Just enough, you don't want to waste it, so that's plenty. And then we're going to use our pH 7, so we'll calibrate it to 4 and 7. You can do 10 too, but I think we'll just try 4 to 7 to start. So that's 7. See, if you know the color, you won't get it confused. And where, I, where did I put my storage cap? Right here. I'm going to replace this storage solution right now too. So, oh. This storage solution might be getting a little old. Yeah, but you know, I think it's time to get a new storage solution, but that should be okay for now. No, let's calibrate. And so under pH it says cal, calibrate. Right under here, we're gonna hold that. So it says cal. It's gonna tell us what it wants us to calibrate to. It's got four first, so let's stick it in four. That's gonna remain flashing. Eventually it's gonna side scroll. There we go. Still reading four. It's gonna give us four zeros and then it'll tell me like to do a seven or 10. I think this meter might ask for seven. Error. That's good, bad. Let's try again. We got it in four again. 
Hopefully it works this time. Better not give me an error, I'm gonna be pissed. Yep, doesn't work. Okay, that's good. All right, so we got our pH down, our flora grow, our flora bloom, and then a different type of micronutrient, but you know, it'll be all right. So if we follow the flora grow requirements, we have, we're gonna start with our 25 gallon container. So you need a teaspoon per gallon, and we're doing aggressive, veg well, we're doing mild vegetative growth right now. They're young plants. So one teaspoon per gallon, that means we need 25 teaspoons of this, of this flora grow. Now, a teaspoon is five milliliters, I believe. So there's five, mil five millimeters in a teaspoon. So that means we need 100 millimeters, milliliters, milliliters sorry, 100 milliliters into that 25 gallon reservoir. It's gonna be close with this alone. We could use the graduated cylinder since we need so much. Might make it easy. Um, Jenk's gonna grab it. Let's get this open. I just shook it up a little bit. What does that go to? 200, so. And we only need 100. If I had a funnel, that would probably be decent. Or I guess it is only 100, right? I oh, thought yeah. that said 200 milliliters, but like, oh, this it's 20 degrees Celsius, so it's 100 milliliters. So 100 milliliters. Now, if I had a funnel, it would be more efficient, but. You don't need no stinking funnels? I don't need no stinking funnels. I'm a professional. Boom. And now we can mix this into our solution. Ideally, we'd be mixing it in like a bucket beforehand, but you know, it'll be all right. So I'm gonna dump this in, and I guess I could just use the pipe bat as a stir stick, kinda. And you don't wanna just dump it all in one spot slowly. Just better to around, get in here, stir it in. Use something bigger than this. So that means we probably need 100 milliliters. So let's check what we need for bloom. Bloom, mild aggressive growth, one teaspoon per gallon. We need 100 milliliters and 25 gallons. So let's add this next. Shake it up a little, make sure everything's sh shaking up. All right. Let's go mix this in. Ideally we'd be doing, should be mixing this into a five gallon bucket and then adding it, but it'll be okay like this. Just make sure you guys got it stirred up. So we've got bloom, grow, now we got this micronutrient, Which, micronutrient formulation. Which says use one milliliter per liter. Um, so we're talking four, Approximately four liters per gallon and 25 gallons. It's still the same thing. So 100 milliliters. Okay, perfect You can do that math check it, but yeah, I know it's right. It's, yeah, I know calculus So Jenk's gonna do the micro Am I? Yeah Ooh, It's a really dark green Perfect. Well, I can dump it in and then next we'll be doing our pH down This one's easier to see in there. So we really gotta mix that up. Okay. Should be wearing gloves too, but whatever. Rinse out our cylinder. Cover all this back up. The pH down will be next. So this is a giant jug. We're definitely going to use the uh, pipe app for this. We got 25 gallons of water. So we're going to figure out our calculation, and I'll show you how to pipe at this. So I've got my pipe at and my device that helps me suck up the solution with the pipe at. I'm going to take this pH down and add it into this water bottle, mix it up with the water first, and then add it to our reservoir because it can cause the nutrients to precipitate out if you just go from here straight to there. So I'm going from here to here. I'll start with five milliliters in this water bottle 
um, and then gonna test the pH of the solution. I already know that it's a little, little alkaline, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the pH down and then go and check. And so let's do this. This part right here is how it is gonna open up the airflow and then suck the pH down up this tube and I want to only go to five milliliters. So you gotta make sure this is really secure on here. And then when you go to suck it up, it's kind of hard to see with the pH down. Make sure this is really secure. So we've got a little too much. See pipe adding skills are hard, so I'm gonna try to blow some, take some out. So that's about five milliliters. I'm gonna go into here. And I can just take this cap, this off, and we'll drain in. And I'm gonna put the cap on, shake it up, add it to our reservoir. And then I'll mix this up too. Should have gloves on, but you know. Now this meter is reading about, it's reading right, even though it's not quite calibrated. We put it in, nutri in our pH solution and of seven and it read seven, so I'm assuming that it is correct. I'm also gonna mix this up since I, a little bit. So I just put that pH down in there. Let's get that stirred up. drop our pH meter in there and see what it is. Six, roughly six, maybe a little That's higher. Nice. Yep, here you go. 6.3. So this is looking like it's gonna be just about in the range we need. Looks like it's settled on 6.4, 6.5, 6.4. Perfect, perfect. That's what we're looking for. Now I'm going to measure the EC, so that's this meter, hit nutrient units, drop it in there. Should be about one, an EC of one hopefully. Oh, a little high. We also had nitrates in there, so um, from the fish water, so it looks like we're closer to two, which is a little more aggressive, 1.9, EC of 1.9, so we definitely um, don't need to add any more nutrients. That means, so maybe a little less next time. Cause we're supplementing this water with fish water and our own nutrients. So 1.9 will be all right. But 1.2 is probably better for young seedlings and stuff. So um, we'll see how they do. And so we're gonna do the rest of the, same thing with all these other systems. Jenks already started. That's pretty much how it's done. And we'll, every day I'll come in here and check the EC, pH. I also need to check temperature, I forgot about that. We did talk about that in class. So let's see what the temperature is. Sometimes it takes a little bit for it to register. 66. So that's a good temperature range too. Like I said, 65 to 75. Um, definitely don't need to chill this water. We'll see, since we just did the water change, how, how much the temperature increases over the week. Um, but this facility, you know, the vents are running right now. Probably don't need to, probably don't need to really mess with cooling or warming the water. It's right in our desired temperature range, so sweet.